God be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. And, 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 and it also identifies it as not being the everlasting kingdom because there's only one everlasting kingdom, and that's the kingdom of God. So, <laughs> so spiritually, get this now spiritually, what spirituality says is, is that the, the spirituality consumes the physical reality. You can have a physical reality that does not line up with God's divine reality. That is why the scripture tells us we don't walk by sight. Yeah. Because, yeah. see, the physical thing is not all there is to it for, the, for, for God's people. The physical reality, if we if we were lined up with God rightly, we would trace the physical reality back to the unseen reality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The divine reality have a tendency to manifest itself in the physical. But that's going to be reality manifested even if it ain't connected to God. That's a lot. Yeah. That's deception. That's where deception happens. Deception happens when you lay hold of something physical and make that your reality when that thing has no connection with God. Okay. There you go. There you go. And therefore, it's still true, even though it may be not, it's not God's truth, it's just the truth to that person. So, like, like they say, beauty is in the eyes of the beholder, so is truth. Yeah, yeah. Well, there, there's a truth that says, if you sin, sin the way you sin is death. I don't have to believe that. And it, at some point in my life, I might not have experienced that. But over a period of time, it's going to play itself out. It, 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 uh, it, that makes sense. My, my, I can, I can, I can, I can commit adultery today. I didn't get caught. Well, the way you sin ain't death today. But at some point, it's going to manifest what I've done. And and that that because I think that's the truth that the the Lord is, is grooming us in, because there's a lot of I, there are a lot of temporal truths that I lived out, and it eventually proved out to be just they flat out lies, it, it, it deceptions and, and, and delusions. Um, so Hitler wasn't going to rule the world. Okay, no. let me give you an example. In John chapter nine, Bartimaeus is blind. Yes. Physically, yes, uh, yes. For Bartimaeus, blindness is a reality. Yes. And for the folk that know him, his blindness is a reality. Yes. But that's physical. And what what what, what John teaches us is, is that but that that reality was disconnected from the divine reality. Now, once Jesus comes into the scene and Jesus gets involved in his physical reality, now his preaching. physical reality now begins to take shape and begins begin to be transformed according to the reality that is in Christ. Go, go, go. Christ saw fit to grant him sight. Right. And now his, his physical reality has to not give way to the divine reality. He said, go Hallelujah. watch the That's awesome right there. That's it right there, yep. Right, because he didn't, deny, he didn't deny he was blind. Matter of fact, he wore something to say he was going, yeah. right? Ooh. And he got up. That was a good one, Bishop. <laughs> that covering to say he was blind. God bless him, man. All I'm telling mm. you is that it, before, before he had a reality. Yeah. And it was blind. No, right? him, man. It was not connected. With that, that, and Jesus said that reason he was born blind and that he would have a chance to make the connection to the spiritual reality. No, now, he did. Right, right. Right. Oh, I'm saying is, Re reality, a, a lie will produce a reality. In the end, it's going to produce eternal damnation. Yes. That's going to be the reality. <laughs> yeah, he said it was. It's not. That was a good word. That, 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 was, that, that is a, a, a truth that can be applied in life altering changes should manifest because that, that, that right there brings a clarity to God confirming his word with signs following. That, it, it's so funny because remember that one where this, he kept telling them that the girl was asleep and they started laughing at him and said, she's sleeping, this girl is dead. Get out. Go on now. Get. 
<laughs> it didn't even matter to his reality. Reality to him, she was asleep. The reality to him, him, she was dead. But wow, man, that's deep because Jesus says, if any man believes in him, though he be dead, yet shall he live. If he were alive, he would never die. Another reality. Well, even in the text that you read this morning, in verse 9 of Thessalonians, says, even him who's coming is after the workings of Satan with all powers and signs and lying wonder. Yeah. See, yeah. he's going to be able to make some stuff happen in the physical. Yeah. Help us, Lord. Help us. Help us out. Yeah. But they're going, and they're going to assume that because it's happening in the physical, it's connected to the divine reality. Exactly. Yeah. If they exactly. make that assumption, they are by definition deceived. Deceived. Woo! Yeah. I'm trying to which, find is, which is why it is imperative that we, that we give God all glory and all honor when signs follow. It just ain't the true reality. You know what? That's, a, that's, that's an excellent point because go back to there's evidence. Uh -huh. We can see it. It's provable on everybody. But that don't necessarily make it true, even no, though now we can point all that. Man, because that's awesome. and that's why it's, that's why it's called deception. Yeah. Because just like the bread scripture just said, it could be a lying wonder. So we just can't say because yes, I can see, smell, touch, taste, and feel it. Then that means un unequivocally, that's truth. No, sir, it does no, not. It does not. So when when we reestablish the connection with the Father, we were reconciled with the Father. Now we have access to truth. Our senses can be deceived, but the Spirit of God can't. So we're asking, we're looking at the situation and just literally asking, like, Lord, what is this? What am I looking at? You know what I'm What's really happening there? And, and because we have reestablished that connection, that communication, somebody said earlier this morning, you, you can't have a, a relationship without communication. And I thought about that thing happening in the Garden of Eden. Their yeah. communication with God broke off. They no, broke it didn't. Off. But it didn't. It did not. God never stopped communicating with Adam and Eve. Okay. He continued to communicate. He continued to teach them. The, pro so, the problem was he started getting information from an additional source. Yes. Yes. Oh, so, okay. I hear you. I see that. Okay. So the, and, in the and, process, and, that information. Yeah. So now he, he, has, the process yeah, lies. Now he has two streams of information entering in and he has to discern from the two which, uh, is, which is true and and what we're doing right now thank god man this whole process is like allowing us to get those information flow and discern which one really the truth and which one's a lie yeah, you, you have to ask, God's ask, flow. ask yourself in, in, first, in first thessalonians chapter 2 verse 9 why is the one to call a lying one Lying wonder. <laughs> because it's not one that God created. He, he, he is denying that it's not a wonder, but he, what he's saying is that that one ain't connected to God. It yeah. ain't connected. I like that. It's not connected to God. Right, right. Well, this is good stuff. I, I was thinking that even, even with this uh, lecture result, they're not they're saying the wrong words. They're not saying that the the uh, results were, uh, were wrong. In the sense it was stolen, they're really saying is that if you get rid of these particular ballots, then I won, right? That's what it is. Yeah, the urban, the urban ballots. Right. You're right, right. The ones that came from a lot of those uh, uh, people from urban. I like that. That's a better. I like that word you said. That's even better. You know, I'll get ready to say it for these black people, but <laughs> let's talk about it. They came from urban. Yeah. 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 I like that. That's a better word. <laughs> yeah, but that's what he's talking well, about. Well, it's the truth because that's what that's where most of the protests are in yeah. urban areas. See, right. that's where that's yeah. where that's, that's where your president wants y'all to realize that they're two separate Americans. Exactly. Yeah. Chris, so you exactly. get to have two different votes. Right. Because somebody said, and, and there's seventy some million people that agree with him. Right. Because if you look at it, I was looking at this, and y'all correct me wrong, Chris, on this one, if. In the past, if you go back a little few more years, in the past, if you have 50, 57% white men vote for a candidate and 55% white women vote for a candidate, they normally win, right? Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, because that's that, that's been changing over the last decade. That number been been being skewed over the last two or three elections. Uh -huh. Well, it, it goes against their their principle and their belief that that everyone else is a minority. When in yeah. fact, Caucasian people are a minority in this world. Period. In the world, yeah, that's true. They are the minority. I agree. I agree. Right. And so it goes against the established. <laughs> well, go go ahead. What I'm saying because is it, what I'm about to start talking about is 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 the demographic. Never mind. Go ahead. Right. And you said the world, but what's happening is now is more uh, <sighs> in this country. That there's a population shift or decline that has now put everybody in place. <laughs> Regardless of a majority, in other words, there's the, we start, I guess we get to the point that there's a majority in this country. Obviously, this is a, this is a good topic because because the pastor starts jibber jab. Yes, yes. <laughs> his his signal gets messed up. I get jammed out. I get jammed out. They, they be jamming you up. Hey, <laughs> hey, 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 it, hey! It's the man jamming him up because they don't want to hear, hear what he got to say. Right. It's a population shift that's occurred in this country. The demographics has changed. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's really not even a shift. It is a unity of people of color. That is the issue. And the division has always been there. And that is the purpose of them to make themselves the majority. You're preaching, brother. As You're preaching now. As long as they keep a division between people of color from different descent, then they are the majority. But when people of color of all descent begin to be to to gather together, then they are by extreme the minority, and that's in every continent. So, you know, you, you know, when you look at as long as you put the head on the side of the globe. It's still, it's still the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. It's Satan working through his people to gain control and power and, and influence, and the kingdom of God working towards the same end. Uh, the division, actually, in the United States of America, and if we're not, I said, if we're not sharp, we're going to miss it, is that the church is under attack in the United States of America. And that uh, the numbers, of, regardless of who gets in that office, Whoever is not allowed in the kingdom to be propagated in, you know, in peace, as we pray for, is going to the be church one. is broken in America. Yeah, there you go. That's a better. That's a better, a better way to put it. Because we have fallen to the, the, the satanic. Let me say, we divide ourselves. Which church? You talking about the reality in Christ or some reality outside of Christ? Well, well the reality well, in Christ. Say that. The reality. The okay, good. Organized religion. Yeah. yeah. In, in America. Okay, that's good. Yeah, okay, that's the one. But I don't know how we're going to make the distinction between that. But I think it's necessary that we do in the future. Uh, we got to come up with some term to be able to identify the two. You know, the church, the organized religion, or the church, the body of Christ. Well, that's the, the difference. That's the difference right there. You have the body of Christ, and you have the church, which is a, the church is a, a term in in this country as a body of believers a local body a a people who assemble in a sanctuary but the body of christ which is the church has nothing to do with a sanctuary i think our numbers is it has it, it's the temple and we are the temple yeah. I think that the influence of the Christ in America is still a great influence, and that the saints in America need strengthen one another across racial, uh, you know, color, race, color, creed. Race. I don't know how that. I guess it's, the word says, "My people were to call by name, humble themselves and pray." He wasn't talking about a specific racial or, 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 or color people. He was talking about all of his true believers, all the believers, those believing in Jesus Christ. And if that we move toward that, end, I think we'll see that revival. We've all been, I, I guess, we've all been praying for. Yeah, exactly. well, I say this all the time. You can take pretty much any any person of any descent 
to go into church on Sunday and be accepted. Yeah, yeah. But you leave that sanctuary, mm. then the division begins. So as long as they're in those walls, the church is pretty much on one accord in their little sanctuary. Yeah. Come on, brother. Let me, let me say something about this political thing. Let's get something like this. I don't think. I think we need to try to look at this thing from uh, from a from a from a kingdom perspective, or a divine reality perspective. The, the difference between Trump and Biden is nothing more than the change of a door, the kind of door. I'm not looking at either one of those men as to. For, for a solution to anything. Mm -hmm. they, all they do is shape or modify the door of interest that God is extending to us to minister to accomplish them. Man, we amen. either Nine go through feet. a Trump door or we go through a Biden door. Yeah. And both of those doors have this own unique peculiarity. But they have absolutely nothing to do with the reality of God's kingdom. We are still told, live the message, proclaim the message, yeah. and get as many souls as you can before the time expires. Yeah, that's and, and, that's and, it. And, How and I think the nuances of, of Republican and Democrat and all that stuff. Yeah. I, listen, that's the worldly system. Yes. It is corrupt by definition. Mm -hmm. It is always corrupt. Yeah. So we, we can't delete the thing that is of that world system because it has as its foundation the God of the world. prayers. That's for the church. So when I, when I think about the political thing, I'm just looking at, okay, the door is going to be hey, man. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? And, and since you said that, uh, I will say this is, is going to be a big difference. I think that while Trump is in office and, and okay. was in office, that there was a greater uh, reaping of the heart because <laughs> of the type of environment that he led. And when Biden gets oh, in my office, God. I think that there's going to be less pressure on on certain people. We're getting political again. So, so, yeah, but, but, but not no, necessarily. In, in, in not necessarily. Of, of what we, the, the subject of the conversation is the environment that we'll be able to preach this gospel. Not that we're going to have to, we're going to be, what's the word? Uh, we're going to be absolved of preaching it. It's like the God in hell, in hell itself, we got to preach the gospel. But under certain environment, certain conditions, we're going to be able to do it with a lot more ease than under others. And we are going to see a shift, I think, in the if this regards of the if the administration changes, we're going to see a shift in the in the door Wait. that we're able to preach through. Let me tell you something else you'll see. Not only will you see that, but but Trump will expose a certain aspect of the fallen nature that causes us to see to see what people are. Biden would expose a totally different aspect of yeah. the politics. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, hatred and vibe and all that other stuff shows up when Trump is in there and you get to see the hatred that is in the, the human nature. The prejudice, the, the raw selfishness that is of the human nature. Yeah. When Biden is in there, you'll see another aspect of the fallen nature, but both in both cases, it's still folk that need to be saved. Amen. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I agree. So we did bring us. It's, it's not. It's not the seven. Just like I say, that was a better way of, of of the point that I was making. It's just that when I know oppressed people, when they have nothing to look for, they look for God. When all else fails, praise God. And uh, and that that's the only point that I was making when. Uh, uh, and so I just think that Biden is more liberal and, and, and willing to, to help the oppressed more. So I think that they, they will they will uh, be less burdened. They'll so be less that, burdened. Was, that that was my, my my only point that I was making. It, it wasn't really so, a political so the question, statement. The question becomes so the question becomes, what does it profit the man to gain social justice and lose his soul? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yeah, it really does. That that is that that's it. And, and, and the other question, I, I think, in terms of friendship with the world, is enmity to God. 
So at some point, this this is Johnson again. The church is going to come under attack, and it's going to come from places that we might not expect it to come from. Oh, what because, man? Because, what, oh, what will what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Yeah, that, 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 right. So so it, it's a, it's a lot that's happening right now that's shaping up. That I think we're going to be a little bit surprised because when devils can agree, who are they going to come oh, against? Let me ask this question, since you said that. Is the soul saved or is the spirit saved? The spirit is from God. The Bible says the soul is the concern. It can be cast into hell. Okay, but is the soul saved when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, or is the spirit saved? The spirit is God. The spirit is from God. Your spirit man is, is from God. The Bible talks about the soul is the issue. It's your soul has got to be saved. I thought you said salvation is a connection back to God, right? It's a bridge. Separation from God is dead. Connection is being with God is being alive. But now your soul now has an avenue for salvation through the connection with God, right? But here's what Jesus is saying. The soul that's sinned it. Still die. Yeah. Still die. Shall die. In Revelation, you say, and I beheld under the throne of God the souls of them that will be headed for the testimony of Jesus. Yeah. It was the souls of men that were there. Yeah. 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 So the unique role that the spirit of man plays in this whole thing is to give him an avenue to be shaped and molded by God. Yeah. Yes. Or if he did, or if he deceived to be shaped and molded by the prince of this world. He that win his souls is wise, according to the Bible. Yeah. Yeah. And Jesus said, fear not the one that can kill you. Fear the one that can kill you and put your soul in his hell. Yeah. And, and I think the one that breaks the soul is meant to break down and the spirit. spirit. It's that, that the spirit should turn to God. Yeah. 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 And the flesh would turn to earth. Right. So there's, there's a distinction. So what I saw, what I saw in politics, now, it, it, it's another interesting thing. Here's an interesting thing about this. Now, the, the soul is eternal. It is. Yeah, it is. Which is, which is, which is, which is a very amazing thing because. So now does that does that throw it into the spiritual category? The soul is spiritual. It's just another element of spirit. Is it? It's, it's spiritual. Well, it's not physical. Is my point. It's not corporeal. It's not so, you can touch. So, what does it mean when when God breathed into man and he became a living soul? So, but, prior to that, what was he? There was no, there was he was nothing. He didn't exist. Well, he created man. He said also. And he breathed into man, and man became a living. So oh. I, think, I think what you're looking at is, is that he's backing into it. He's kind of backing his way into it. He's telling you that he, he fashioned man from the dust of the earth. If you go to chapter yeah. two, yeah. he fashioned man from the dust of the earth and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. His spirit. And it was then that man became a living soul. Yeah. Yeah. The body is a suit. It's just a vehicle. It's just a temple here. i understand that but if there's a living soul then, then isn't there the opposite yeah, yeah that's what the one's going to hell it's, it's well, the opposite is that that which god blew into adam's nostril was in god yeah, yeah. okay i i think all life all souls originate from god himself that's right. what he says also, uh, we can't speculate as to what man is before God creates him. Well, I mean, he was created out of the dust of the earth. Yeah, then but, he but, but his, no, no. His body was created. His body is created from the dust of the earth. Yes. Mm -hmm. Body was. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But also, uh, the works is all souls of God. Yeah. So, likewise, it wasn't until after Jesus breathed on the disciples that they received the Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost. Wait, that was a bother. That was, God, that, that was the importation of God living inside of him. Yes. Right? Is that right? 
That was, symbolic. that was symbolic what he did because the day of Pentecost is when the Holy Spirit actually came. Correct? I think what they said that they received the Holy Spirit when he breathed on them. What did the scripture say? Did it say breathe? I think it said that they received the Holy Ghost when he breathed on them. The Holy Spirit didn't come until the Jesus they said, Receive ye the Holy Spirit. He breathed on them, and then the Holy Spirit came. So, does it receive it? Because the Spirit of God, according to the eternal purpose, has to, it's only legitimate when Jesus has been raised from the dead has ascended back to the Father yeah. and God's divine timeline which is Pentecost see he, he's already promised that, that in Pentecost in the Old Testament it shadowed the divine reality of when things will happen <laughs> yeah. so Jesus, it is not by accident that Jesus on the day of Pentecost yeah. pours out the Holy Ghost come on yeah. now Peter begins to proclaim this is that which is prophesied by the prophet Joel yeah. this is that exactly Exactly. exactly. So everything that happened prior to Jesus being ascended back to the Father, being exalted at the right hand, being glorified, and having received of the Father's promise, everything before that is pre preparation for that. Yeah. It, is, yeah. it is not permanent. Yes, exactly. It's like chapter 10, Matthew chapter 10. Jesus gives them power to go out and heal the sick, to raise yes. the dead, to do all kinds yes. of things. Yes. But that's no different from Old Testament stuff because Elijah did that. Exactly. Yes. They exactly. got the Spirit of God upon them. Right. Upon them. It not well within. Permanent presence. Not they yeah. have, it even said it cannot it happen on. outside of Jesus himself. Right. Because he breathed on them. Right? That was external. Right. So I think I think they call it I think the confusion is when you said it was symbolic. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't think it was necessarily I, I, symbolic. Yeah, I, I think it actually was something that happened, but like in the Old Testament prophets or saints when he came up on them and they still had the same power to do things. So it wasn't really symbolic, but I understand what you're saying. It wasn't the Pentecost Holy Spirit. I understand what you're saying. But I just say the confusion came when you said it was symbolic. Right. Well, I guess we're well, see, here's, here's the, the only difference between the same. In, in, in the Old Testament, Spirit of God can come upon you, but it does not transform you. Yeah. There you go. New yeah. Testament, when the Spirit of God comes upon you, His work is in power. Every time you yield to Him, yeah. you know, yeah. God shapes you. Yeah, he's in, he, he changes you. Yeah. The, so that the more you yield, the more yeah. you surrender and submit, the more the Spirit of God is able to work through you and through working through you, He is fashioning you. Molding you is shaping you according to the image. Exactly. Exactly. So that's right. And dwelling in the Holy Spirit. Yes, sir. You know? And look, this this goes back on that the, the last part about that politics I was saying is there's a conservatism means to keep things at a status quo. Progressive or liberal means to move in a, a shift from the status quo to something else. And what's happening, I think, is saying there's a shift happening in the country. Could you could you could you clarify status quo? What status quo means is when you talk about can you clarify status quo? Like like white privileges is, is a status quo, a privilege that not given to somebody else, but only given to a certain segment of society is a status quo. White. We're saying that we're trying to change that where everyone gets an equal footing. You don't, you know, it doesn't matter what black like. <laughs> No, right. They mentioned them up today, man. They mentioned them back. I'm back yet. I'm back yet. There must be some powerful truths in what he was saying. You can you hear me <laughs> show distorted all that? Can y'all hear me now? No, it can't hear me now. We didn't hear none of that. Can you hear me now? Not a bit. No, we ain't not gonna stop recording. Yeah, because you're done. Now we can hear you. <laughs> Somebody's jamming you. <laughs> hey, the bottom line. <laughs> the bottom line is, is we're trying to change. Look, he, he locked up now. Oh, All right. <laughs> I'm gone again. <laughs> I'm having to leave. The Democrats up. are jamming you. The Democrats are jamming you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Hey, Jimmy, Jimmy, go. Oh, I, I got a, 
I got I got a I got a verse for you. This, this verse says that uh, this is a kind of a strange thing, and I think this had to do with how we how we miss the reality of God. And his, this is just one verse. This is something you think about. In John chapter 11, 15 11, here's what Jesus said. Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there has not really a greater than John the Baptist. Amen. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. Is greater. greater than he. Now, if I read this correctly, this name John the Baptist is the Elijah or the Elias Jesus. This is this is the one that was supposed to come. Yeah. He Jesus. is coming in the spirit and the power of Elijah. Yes. To turn the hearts of the people back to God the Father. But yet it says. That as great as John the Baptist is, having been having, having the spirit of God from his birth, from the womb, that he that is least in the kingdom of God. That's powerful. Testing. Y'all hear me yet? Yeah, we can hear you now. Because you ain't saying that. Yeah, you can't take <laughs> teeth no more. <laughs> so that's a reality I think that we have failed to really grasp. Is that how, how God sees us? As opposed to how we see ourselves. Amen. Amen. Now we, we marvel at John the Baptist and the thing that John the Baptist did, and he fulfilled his mission according to God's purpose. But the, Jesus said, but when it comes down to the kingdom, those of us that embrace him and believe and receive the Spirit of God. Yes. We, <laughs> we have the potential for to 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 evidence God's greatness. Amen, man. Amen. Oh, wow. Hey, I guess we better go ahead and pray out because I we, can't. We've got some awesome. I can't get in. Hey, I guess awesome we revelation. <laughs> I can't get in. <laughs> You're being jammed again. <laughs> I think we need to pray out, don't we? <laughs> Jamming you again. <laughs> I think the bandwidth because a lot of people uh, your free service not. Yeah, they probably start at eleven. Yeah. Then what we're going to and pick up for next um, Thursday or next Sunday. Thursday. Now do you want prayers out? Oh yeah. Father God, thank you. Again, thank you. Thank you for the brotherhood. Thank you for this fellowship, Lord. Thank you for calling us out from among them. Yes, Lord. But Lord God, thank you for sending us back for him. Lord, we thank you for having called us out to bring others out, to encourage others to, to turn to this truth. We thank you, Father God, for having manifested your truth in and through us. The reality of your person, Lord God. The loosing of the bondage of Satan and sin upon our lives and the freedom that we've experienced in that move on your part of pulling us out from under the bondage of the devil. Lord, we hope that you use us. We pray that you use us to free some other people. Make the word real in our hearts, Lord God. Make your reality real to us so that we can impart that realness and that reality to other people. We thank you for the suffering that you have allowed us to go through because it humbles us, Lord God, and it causes us to depend on you even more so. We know you, we cannot fail. You came to seek and to save that which was lost. You are the author and the finisher of our faith. Yeah. You are the one who designed this plan of salvation, and you're working it out toward the furtherance of your kingdom and the salvation of your creation, Lord God, and you're working it out through us. You've given us a little part to play in it, and we thank you for that, the preaching of the gospel, Lord God. Yes. We thank you, man. We thank yeah. you, Father God, for just being with us today. We thank you for making us better sons this day. We pray, Father God, that the words have been spoken, that you would call them to our memory because they were great nuggets that were shared this day. And we thank you for the for the audio and the video tape so we can go back and review and, re and recount some of this stuff so that our minds can be reformed, that we can begin to transform, Lord God, and that we can begin to receive these truths that you have that you have imparted to us, that we can manifest them in the earth, that others can see the prowess of Jesus Christ, the sovereignty of the Lord Jesus, and the power, the true power, the supreme power of the kingdom of God, may manifest in their eyes and be drawn to you. 
that they can receive eternal life, even as we have received it. We have received it, Lord God. We have received the healing. We have received the eternal life. We have received the, the we have received the deliverances, Lord God. Yes. And we thank you for that. We thank you, Lord God. Just continue working our lives and let all that we do be done to your glory and to the furthest of your kingdom. And this yes. we pray in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. 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 Amen.